So welcome to this video, my name is Alex. So if you're feeling negative, worried, anxious, afraid, angry, frustrated, pessimistic, hopeless, even suicidal, then you must watch this video all the way to the end. Now I've, I've been suicidal myself. 20 years ago I was um, in my car down a dark country lane with a hose pipe running through the window and engine running and I was the car was filling with fumes. I'd taken a handful of sleeping tablets and uh, drunk a bottle of wine. I wanted to end my life. I've been in the darkness. I've lived in the fear, the hopelessness, the pessimism, the self-hatred. I've been there. And since that, since that day where I woke up and I realized I had another chance at life, I've steadily been climbing the mountain from that place, climbing the mountain to the top of the mountain where the light shines brightly, where there is no shadow, well, there is no cloud and you can be there whatever state you're experiencing right now whether it's negativity anger frustration hopelessness pessimism fear whatever it is you can move very quickly if you watch this video you'll understand why you can move very quickly away from that and see things more clearly and then you will be so glad that you didn't try ending your life. You'll be so glad that you didn't cling on to your pessimism and hopelessness because we do, we cling on to our frustrations and our angers and our fear. We cling on to it because it, it's like food. It gives us some kind of um, some drama and we like it. For strange reasons, but we like it. It's predictable. We're in control. We love being in control. Human beings love to be in control. So as long as we can be in control, we don't mind if we feel negative, angry, frustrated, because as long as we're in control, we hate not being in control. That's our Achilles heel, not being in control. We hate it. So as long as we can stay in control, we feel safe, because that's how we feel safe. We remain in control. But that's actually not the real way to experience safety. The real way to experience true safety is to let go and realize that there is another force greater than you which is guiding you, protecting you, providing for you, steering your life in the right direction and giving, giving you everything you need. That is true safety. That's safety without illusion. Because if you're denying that, or if you can't see that, that truth that I just described, if you can't see that and you're trying to create security and safety through control, then you're destined to fail, you're destined to suffer and you're destined to experience pain. So I'm assuming you don't want to experience pain. You don't want to suffer. You want freedom. You want truth. You want love. You want healing. You want peace. You want the light. I'm assuming you want those things if you're watching this video. And so you have to let go of the control and trust. Trust that if you do let go, then things will be a million times better not only than they are now, but better than you could ever imagine. It's impossible to put into words what happens when you let go and let God, if you use the word God, or let the universe, divine love, the creator, the source, whatever word you want to use, let that force of loving, conscious intelligence, let it take control of your life. Give your life to that force. Put your life in the hands of that force and trust it. And this is the key. If you trust that force with your life, with your destiny, if you trust it completely, you will not be afraid. The antidote to fear is trust. Because when we trust, we relax. And we relax our heart. And what fear is doing, it's keeping our heart tense, contracted. As soon as we believe a fearful thought, as soon as we allow that, that thought to come into our body, our body tenses up. And it resists. That's what fear is. Fear is, re fear is resistance and tension. When we let go, when we let go of the tension, we let go of the resistance, fear cannot be present in our body. It's really important to understand that. You cannot be afraid and relaxed at the same time. This is one of the most important things to understand. If you're prone to fear, you cannot be afraid when your body is relaxed. So if you notice, if you, if you find yourself in states of fear, the number one thing you do before you start trying to solve that fearful problem in your mind, you relax your body. 
you breathe and you say to yourself, it is safe to relax. I trust that it is safe to relax. I trust that if I relax, I am safe. I am protected. No harm can come to me if I relax. Because we think we're protecting ourselves. We think if we let this tension and resistance get into our body and into our heart, we think it's like a protective shield that'll stop us getting hurt, stop us experiencing the bad things that we don't want to experience. But in fact, what we're doing is we're cutting ourselves off. In re when we resist, we're cutting ourselves off from love, from divine love. You cannot experience God's love when you're in a state of tension. When your heart is in a state of tension, it is not possible. And this is why the media is bombarding us with reasons to be afraid. It doesn't want us to be connected to God. It doesn't want us to be empowered by God. Because then we are autonomous. Then we are empowered and we don't need anything the media wants to sell us. We don't need anything the media wants to give us or make us do. We don't need anything because we are autonomous. We are empowered we are plugged into the source which is divine love and so to actually feel that and it's really important we feel that to feel that we have to relax our body and let the tension go from our body for a start and then allow that relaxation to move into our heart and take a few moments just to relax your body to breathe and say i want to relax I want to feel the safety that comes from relaxing. Because it won't come if you don't relax. If you don't let go of the tension, you will not feel safe. Because tension, the presence of tension in your body means fear. You're saying there is a reason to be tense. You're saying there is a reason to be in resistance. There is a reason to be afraid. That's, what you're, that's the statement you're making when you're allowing tension to remain in your body and in your heart. So you've got to make the opposite statement, which is, it is safe to relax. There is no reason to be tense. There is no reason to be afraid. It is safe to relax. I trust I am safe. And you have to make that statement with your body. It is not enough just to think it. Because we can think anything. We can say, yes, I trust God. I believe God's going to look after me. And we can still be in a state of tension. We can still be carrying tension in our heart and our body while we think those things. You have to let those thoughts change you physically so that you open up, so that you relax and you're no longer resisting. Because when we're in a state of resistance, we are resisting God. God is love and God wants to heal us with his love. But you can't be healed when you're in a state of resistance. You can't be healed when you're in a state of tension. Those are the, not only are they the symptoms, but they're the cause of our greatest malady. Resistance and tension, we have to give it up. We have to give up our resistance to God's love because all resistance stops God's love flowing into us. Now, a lot of Christians who are watching this, and I am a Christian myself, I'm a born-again Christian since the age of 33, Christians will be saying, well, hang on a second, doesn't it say in the Bible that you should resist the devil and he shall flee from you? Or something like this, resist the devil. We don't, resi we don't resist the devil in our body. We resist the devil in here because this is where the enemy, as I said before, the, this, this dark force, this force which feeds on negative emotions, this spiritual parasite which feeds on our negative emotions. That's why the ego is constantly trying to generate negative emotions because it's in service to this spiritual parasite which feeds off our negative emotions. So there is a force which wants you feeling negative emotions so it can feed off those that's its food. So, as I said, we resist that force. We resist that force of darkness, what some people, Christians might call Satan, what you could call evil. We resist that force in here because that's how it gets into our heart. It can only gain access to our heart by encouraging us to believe in negative thoughts. Kind of bite the apples. Imagine that, you know, there's this tree full of apples and all the apples are poisoned. And this voice is whispering to us. It's saying, bite the apples, taste one of these delicious apples. Yet all the apples are poisoned and they will all, they will all lead us 
to uh, feeling a sense of disharmony, of feeling ill at ease, feeling anxious, negative in some way or other. So that's, that's how the force of evil gets into our heart through here. It wants us to bite into the thoughts. It wants us to bite its thoughts so that the venom contained within those thoughts poisons us and it gets into our heart. If we don't bite into those thoughts, if we don't bite into those apples, that venom cannot get down in, into our heart. It's not possible. If we ignore the thoughts that it's saying that we should pay attention to, if we don't engage with those negative thoughts, thoughts of fear, thoughts of anger, thoughts of sadness, thoughts of division, judgment, hostility, blame, all those thoughts, if we don't bite into them, if we don't engage with those thoughts, then that force cannot get inside us. It cannot gain access to our heart because love comes from our heart and the greater force of love, which you can call God, divine love, is speaking to us in our heart. It's kind of, it's entering us. It's possessing us through our heart. It's possessing us with its love. It wants to take full possession of us through our heart, which is so, why it's so important to relax our heart, open our heart and let the love flow from our heart into, our, into every cell of our body. It illuminates our mind. It makes every cell of our body vibrate with joy and light and health. That force comes from our heart. And it's, that's why it's so important that we listen to our heart, we open our heart, we relax our heart and let God's love flow through our heart into the rest of us and lead us to action. It, 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 um, it motivates us. That love motivates our body to take action from that place of love. And this, this wants to interfere with this. The ego, the mind, all those thoughts, all those judgments, all those criticisms, the accuser, the voice of the accuser. It wants to make you weak. It wants to interfere with your heart. It wants to say, yeah, love is great, but, or love is all very well and good, but. But what about this really intellectual argument, this really intellectual um, perspective that I'm going to give you. Think about that. Don't listen to your heart. Don't open your heart. Don't let the love fill you from your heart because that's not really real. What I'm telling you is real. What this vision, this picture of reality, all this clever understanding, these sophisticated understandings that I'm giving you, they're real. And your heart is just, it's just emotion. It's just blah, blah, blah. See how clever how clever the enemy is, how clever the ego is. It just wants to convince us to be separate from our heart. It wants to convince us to shut down the pathway to our heart and listen to it instead. It's a battle of voices. Essentially, it's a battle of voices. The battle between good and evil is a battle between voices. There's this, this voice in here, which is the voice of the ego, which is in service to this greater force, this parasite. This voice of the ego, which is constantly trying to get us to listen to it and believe everything it says the judgments the fears the worries the angers it's constantly trying to get us to listen to that so that we don't listen to the voice of god in our heart because the voice of god will tell us relax it's safe it's safe to relax open your heart i am with you this is the voice of god this is what god wants to tell us Open your heart. Trust me. Don't be afraid. There is no reason to resist my love. There is no reason to be afraid. There is no reason to worry. Open your heart. Trust me. Be happy. Be of good cheer. Be joyful. Smile. Be in a good mood. There is no reason to be negative. There is no reason. All the reasons are in here, by the way. And you probably know this. All the reasons come from here. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is what the story of the Adam and Eve in the Bible. It's one of the most important messages in that book, in the book of Genesis. Adam and Eve, God tells them, do not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The fruit of that tree are the thoughts which hang like apples waiting to be tasted, waiting to be bitten into. And as I said, each apple is poisoned with the venom of the serpent, this voice 
which wants us to be hypnotized, deluded into seeing, seeing reality from its perspective. That's why it wants us to bite into those apples, because those apples are poisoned and they bring upon us a delusion that we think is so real. This is the, the reality created by our thoughts. We do not, we should not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because that fruit is poisoned. We need to eat the fruit from the tree of life, which is our heart, which is where God is speaking to us. Which voice do you want to listen to? Which voice are you going to listen to? It's really important not to allow anything your mind tells you to interfere with trusting. Trust God. Just trust God. Trust that God is real for a start. Because I can guarantee you, guarantee you he is real. I'm not saying that because I've been convinced by any religious system or because some book has told me God is real. You know, I've been looking for God. I started looking for God at the age of 18. Through many spiritual practices and paths, Zen Buddhism, Hindu, Hindu practices, you know, Hare Krishna, lived in a Hare Krishna ashram, shamanism, Sufism, Baha'i, all these things, you know, I just wanted, I was just allowing God to come to me. I just wanted to find God. And I found God early on. God showed himself to me, showed himself to me very early on because I was scientific. I didn't resist this. I didn't say, no, God can't be in that direction. No, God can't be in that. I'm only going to look in this direction. My mind was open. I trusted God. My mind was open. I allowed what came to me. I investigated whatever came to me, looked for the truth in it, and I kept on keeping my mind open, keeping my heart open. And eventually, maybe see, 10 years ago, God led me towards Jesus, Jesus Christ. God wanted me to know that Jesus Christ is a reality. He wanted me to be illuminated by the light of Christ because Christ is the only force that can illuminate the darkest chambers of your heart, the deepest, darkest fears, insecurities, that can heal the deepest pains in your heart. Jesus Christ is the only force capable of doing that. And I say this in almost every video, but it's really important to understand that God is a surgeon who wants to heal us. And his only tool, the only tool he needs, is the light of Christ, which is his light in a condensed format. Almost like when you use a magnifying glass under the sun to concentrate the rays and you burn, you burn away. You can burn something, you can set fire to something. That's exactly how it is with Christ. So God concentrates his light into, into the light of Christ and that's what heals our heart finally. That's the final healing process that rids us of all fear, all darkness, all pain, that cleanses the deepest, darkest um, toxins of fear, anger from our heart. And so it's really important to understand this. This is the process that I've gone through over the past, let me see, 25 years. Many spiritual practices and processes and cleansing and healing and detoxification. And then, then God led me to open my heart to Christ. But you have to trust God. If you don't trust God, which means essentially that you will trust this instead. If you don't trust God, then you will trust this. Because your mind will say, because God is reality, God is truth. Essentially what I'm trying to say is this. God is a reality. You don't have to believe me, but I'm telling you, God is a reality. And it's God that wants you to open your heart. It's God that wants you to let go. It's God that wants you to be of good cheer, to be happy. To, be, to celebrate, it's God that wants you to be free and to be healed. And so if that's what you want, then your desire, your will, is in alignment with God's will. Even if you don't believe in God, if, you, if that's what you want, then your alignment, your, your will, your desire, is in alignment with God's desire. Now the question is, are you willing to listen to God? Because God will speak to you and God will bring things into your life. Like he's brought this video God might have brought this video into your life right now and you're watching me for the first time because God wants you to hear this. God will bring things into your life. The question is, how humble are you? Are you willing to say, okay, what does this hold? Is there anything here for me? What is it that God wants to, 
share, share with me? Or what is it that life or the universe, whatever you want to call it, what is it that the universe is trying to say to me or trying to help me with? Now I'll come back to this point that you really need to let go of the fear. Let go of the anxiety. Let go of the tension. Because that's when God can speak to you. As I said, there's two voices. The voice of God, which speaks to you through your heart, and the voice of darkness or the voice of evil, which wants to speak to you through your ego, which wants you to put up walls and barriers. It wants you to judge. It wants you to resist. It wants you to divide and so there's two voices and if you want to listen to the voice of truth which is the voice of God or the voice of love if you prefer if that sounds if that sounds more uh, palatable to you the voice of love if you want to listen to that voice and hear what it has to say and see what it wants to give you then you need to let go of the tension you must let go of the tension and trust that force entirely, entirely. No matter what it seems is coming down the pipe pipeline, and I know what the media is trying to do. I know, I've been studying the media for 17 years and seeing what the messages are. What is the media's agenda? What is it, where does the media want to steer us? Because the media is almost entirely in the hands of those who want us to be living in fear, almost entirely. And its intentions are very, very dark and brutal. Awful. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go into detail. I've been studying them for 17 years. And the messages the media wants to implant in our brain and what it wants to do to us as a society is shocking. It's awful. However, you don't need to, you don't need to know about that. You don't need to hear about that. You just need to stop trusting the media. And stop believing the media. Stop listening to the media. In fact, I recommend that you stop watching the media entirely. Because you are a very sensitive being and you need inspiration. You need to be uplifted. You need to come closer and you need to open up more to that force of love that wants you to heal, that wants you to be strong, it wants to empower you. It doesn't want you to be weak and vulnerable and relying on you know, those in authority, well, what do I have to do? What's the right thing to do? What should I be doing? I want to, you know, I don't want to get it wrong. It wants you strong. The voice of love, the voice of God wants you empowered and strong so that you are autonomous. That you can, you can choose. You can choose your freedom. You can choose your joy. You can choose happiness because you have to choose it. It's not going to land on you. It's not going to fall out of a tree and land on you. And suddenly you're like, oh, wow, that was a surprise. Now I'm now everything's just rosy and I have the light shining everywhere. It's not going to happen. You have to choose to let go of the fear. And it comes down to this. You have to choose to stop listening to this. Any reason, anything that tells you to be afraid, angry, anxious, judgmental, all those voices which are in service to the voice of evil, you need to stop listening to them. We need to heal. You need to heal. And so you need, you need to trust the voice which tells you that it's safe to relax. It's safe not to worry. You don't have to figure out some escape plan for the future to escape the apocalypse, to escape the zombie apocalypse. You don't have to figure out anything. You don't need to live from that fearful fight or flight mentality be here now and right now right here you need to let go of the fear this is the most important thing i can tell you in this moment you need to let go of the fear the future doesn't exist the media the voices of evil the voices of manipulation the ego wants you living in the future or living in the past Imagine that in the future you'll let go of your fear. When everything's safe to do so, when it looks safe to do so, then you'll let go of your fear. Then you'll drop down your barriers. No, you have to do it now. This moment, while you're watching me right now, you have to drop the tension. Let go of the tension. Let go of the fear and decide to trust God or the voice or the love. If you want to use the word love, any word you prefer, Trust that.
that force is protecting you. It will not let any harm come to you. You just need to stop resisting it. It can't help you if you resist it. So please let go of the resistance to love right now. Relax and let, as you relax, love flows in. It's the only thing that can take the place of fear. Fear is tension. Fear is stiffness. Fear is contraction and resistance. When you let go of the fear, the control, love and life flow in. And that's what you're desperately in need of. Because it's only love that can heal you. So you need to allow that relaxation to go all the way to your heart so that love, God's love, can heal your heart. Nothing else can do it except the love of God in the format, in the form of Christ. You don't even need to use the word Christ, but it is the light of Christ. The only force in the universe capable of illuminating your fears, just vanquishing them, dissolving them, disintegrating your fears, your pain, your anger, all of it. Just allow that force full access to your heart. For the force of Jesus Christ, allow that force full access to your heart and say, okay, I want to be completely healed. You have to want it. And you have to say that you want it. You have to voice it. I want to be completely healed from the darkness. I want to be free of pain. I want to be free of fear. I want to be strengthened by your joy, by your love, by your light. You can use the word God if you're comfortable with it or the word love or whatever word you're comfortable with but it is the light of God and it, that is what will heal your heart so just voice it voice your desire to be healed voice your desire to be illuminated voice your desire to be loving you want to be a loving person surely surely you want to be a more loving forgiving, patient understanding, giving person I'm sure you do so say that out loud, voice that desire, because you have to say what you want. We are so, we're so tangled up with so many desires, we have to be clear, we have to say clearly. Our, our, our voice is like a sword, that's why you take off the S and it's word, you put an S on it, it's sword. The voice is a sword and it cuts through illusion. When you say with your voice, I want this, then you're stating with clarity, you're stating your intention with clarity. I want to be healed. I want to be free of the darkness. I want to be, I want to live in union with God's love or with divine love. That's what I want. I want to be a vessel for love. I want to have love flowing through my heart. I want to have peace and joy flowing through every cell of my body. Please, God, or please, Creator, or please, whatever word you like want to use, please heal me. Help me be a vessel for your love. Help me be cleansed of fear and darkness and pain. And let go of the fear, let go of the tension. You have to play your part. You say what you want, and then you must play your part by letting go of what stands between you and the healing which is tension, resistance and fear. That is the obstacle. That's what stands between you and your healing. That's what stands between you and your illumination. And you and your freedom. Because you're holding on to control, fear, tension and resistance. You're holding on to it. You have to let it go. You have to relax your heart, relax your body and let it go. It's the only way you can let go of it. So this is a day-to-day -day practice, a moment-to-moment -moment practice of dropping the resistance to the love of the universe, the love of God, dropping the resistance. Because that is the obstacle. And it's this which causes the resistance. We are listening to things in our mind which are taking us away from an awareness of our heart, an awareness of our body. We we'll listen to this distraction and it hypnotizes us, makes us forget our heart, makes us forget our body. So whenever we remember, whenever we realize we're listening to this voice, we have to say, okay, I got lost. 
I've got to come back to my, my heart and my body and let go of the tension. As I said, this is a day-to-day, moment-to-moment practice. Letting go of the tension. Because when you do this, when you let go of the tension, you are opening up to God. You're opening up to divine love. And then healing can occur if that's what you want. And restate your desire every day, in the morning, in the evening, all through the day, whatever you want. But restate clearly your desire. I want to be healed. I want to be full of divine love. I want to be a vessel of joy and energy and happiness. I want to shine brightly with God's love or with the light of the universe or whatever. I want to shine brightly. I want to be happy. State that every day and then let go of what stands between you and that happiness, that love, that freedom, that peace, which is only tension. It's only tension and it's only resistance. It really is that simple. And as I said, I'll just end this video by reminding you, you have to let that, you have to let the light, the love, deep into your heart, the light of Christ, let it deep into your heart so that it can heal the deepest, darkest wounds, the deepest, darkest fears. And it will bring them, they'll, they'll come up and you'll see, oh my goodness, they'll come into your awareness, your fears will come up. You've got to let them go, they'll come up and you let them go. You'll notice, I'm, oh no, I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that. You'll notice all the things that you've been subconsciously afraid of for so long. And when you become aware that you're, you're afraid of something, you say, okay, but I'm not afraid of it anymore because I trust. As I said, the antidote to fear is trust. So you let go of the fears, all these things that come to your mind, all these pictures, visions, ideas of suffering and pain and darkness. You let them go, let the visions go because the media wants you to dwell on them. But you need to let them go and say, okay, I'm safe when I trust. I'm safe when I let God, or when I let God's love flow through me. I'm protected when I am close to God, when I'm at peace, when I'm open. Because it's true. You are safe, protected when you are open to God. You are empowered by God. And the darkness cannot come near you. When the light is shining brightly in you, through your heart, when the light is shining brightly, the darkness can't come close because there cannot be darkness where there is light. And this is why it's this is why it's so important to allow that light to shine brightly in your heart. Be happy, be free, be joyful, like a child. There is no reason not to be. There is no reason not to be happy. You are protected by the creator of the universe. You are protected by the force of light which created this whole reality, which is an illusion. You are protected by that force and when you are when you allow that force into you no darkness can come near you isn't that good news so all you have to do is allow that force full access to your heart and then no harm can come to you there will be no threat there will be no anxiety there will be no danger no harm can come to you you will get what you need you will be protected you will be safe when you trust that force, give your heart to that force and let it illuminate you from the inside. So, thank you for listening to this video. I wish you well and God bless you.